guys, so today I'm going to take you guys through a deadlift tutorial. I got help from these advanced lifters and we are going to teach you guys how to do a sumo tutorial and I hope these hips are I hope these tips are helpful. <laughs> I hope these tips are helpful. I am Serena, if you don't know, this is my channel. But for my credentials, I deadlifted 350 at 105 pound body weight. This is my sister, Samira. Um, I deadlifted 402 at 114 body weight. <laughs> My name is Gary Gonzalez and I've deadlifted 710 pounds at 173. So if you want to follow them along with their journey as well, the channels are all going to be linked in the description and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, so my beginner tips for setting up a deadlift, always stand straight first and kind of see where your feet kind of naturally stay. This is not completely intuitive, but you want to set up with your shin touching the bar. I usually like to do it where kind of the rings end, but everyone is kind of different for their body mechanics. I like having an external rotation to my foot. So this is the first part I wanted to touch base on and how to set up. And the second part is how you're going to engage your lats. I like to imagine like I'm holding a pencil in between my lats or kind of like a lat pull down where you get that tightness in. So I like, I like doing a weird gesture with my hands just to really emphasize the tightening. And then I go down and I grab where I feel like you hear that clicking sound and then I pull the click out and then shift and then go up. That is the perfect segue for the intermediate setup of the deadlift where Samira will talk about tensioning and loading the bar at the beginning of the lift. Hi everyone, my name is Samira and my intermediate tip is going to be pulling the slack out of the bar. Overhand, underhand, you could do over, both overhand if you want but I do this. I'm gonna make sure I hear this little clicking noise. Once I hear it, I'm gonna pull. So I always like make sure to hear the clicking noise. Okay, so after you hear the click, you're gonna make sure your hips are set and your hips are going to like go into the bar, like push it into the bar if that makes sense. And then that's gonna help you pull up. Basically pushing my legs into the ground, thinking like it's a leg press. So that's basically what I do and it helps me um, stay tight and it helps me like get the, get the weight up. <laughs> where you feel all the tension in your hamstrings and you kind of use that as momentum to push up on the floor. That's how I like to imagine it in my head just so I could get that extra power to actually push myself off the ground. Hey guys, I'm Garrett. I'm the owner of the beautiful facility that Serena and Swara train at. So my attempt right now is to bring everything together that they said and explain it in a little bit more detail, maybe add a little bit more of an advanced level. So what Serena talked about was the actual setup. So you do want to set up with your shins actually touching the bar before you even initiate the lift, which isn't really intuitive to a lot of people. So a lot of people will actually transition from conventional to sumo by treating it like a wide stance conventional, which it's not at all. So what they're going to do is they'll bring their shins to the bar, but you don't want to do that. You start out with your shins actually touching the bar with your legs straight. In order to get down to the bar, you tension your lats just like Serena mentioned, and you keep your back as upright as possible. In order to get down to the bar, you just basically externally rotate your knees. So you have to have some amount of flexibility and mobility to do this. And as soon as your hands are touching the bar, that's your hip height that you need to be at. So you're not squatting the bar up uh, like a lot of people try to do. If you try to do that, your hips are just going to rise, then the bar's going to get in front of you, and you're already at a huge mechanical disadvantage. So the other thing that they mentioned was tensioning the bar. So that's sort of more of an intermediate to advanced technique. So what you do when you tension the bar is you already know where your starting, starting hip height is going to be based on what I previously explained. So then when you actually tension the bar, you're bringing your hips or your pelvis as close to the bar as possible before you initiate the lift. If you think of this whole system as a lever, your fulcrum you can think of is your actual hips. So once you initiate the lift, you're just trying to close the distance between the bar and your hips as fast as possible. So when you tension the bar, you're isometrically contracting your hamstrings and glutes and pretty much everything else in your body 
which makes it safer, but you're also decreasing the mechanical disadvantage of your fulcrum, your hips being closer to the bar. Hopefully that makes sense. So you actually, when you bring your hips closer to the bar, you're actually rotating or rocking your upper body up and back like this. That's it. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please smash the like button. Comment down below if there's anything else you guys would like to see from us and tutorials or anything in that nature. And make sure you follow them as well. And yeah, stay strong. Strong. <laughs> okay, bye guys. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was kind of short. We didn't go into as much detail as we wanted to, but some other video ideas I'm gonna do is probably like some warm-ups I do for deadlifts, warm-ups I do for squats or bench, all that stuff. So I want to I want to help educate as much as I can, even though I, I'm good at this is stupid. I just wanted to give a huge thank you again to our sponsor of this video, Bill Bars. <laughs> As you guys know, I love my Built Bars. You could use my code Serena10 to try it yourself. And this is another holiday flavor that they came out with, Eggnog, which I have not tried yet and I'm very excited to. Let's open this bad boy up. This little bar has 17 grams of protein, five grams of sugar, and all for 140 calories. Let's dig right in. It really tastes like eggnog. Like, as soon as I smelt it, it felt like I was just opening up a can of eggnog or a can. Oh, I don't know. What's eggnog come in? Container? Whatever. Totally delicious. Basically, like a chocolate bar. And then inside, it looks like this caramel thing. Thank you, Built Bars, for sponsoring this video. And I appreciate you guys so much. All the things are down in the description below. So, if you want to check it out. Also, I just started school, so I'm kind of busy and stressed out about that. <laughs> But luckily, all I have is electives left, so it probably should be an easy semester. And I also wanted to update you guys on my Twitch setup. Look at this. It kind of looks messy right now. But I got all of my Twitch thing in, but the sucky thing is it doesn't even work. Like, it just keeps crashing on me, and so I'm going to have to replace this one with a new one. But just a pain in the butt. That. You have to go through all of that again, but I'm really excited for it. I And I can't wait to start streaming. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.